Hey, happy Saturday, everybody. How's everyone doing? Today is Saturday, November 28, 2020. I'm Lee Lowell from smartoptionseller.com. Hey, listen, I've been getting lots of questions this week about people wanting to know how I find the stocks that I trade options on. Like, what's my process? How, where, where do I get these stocks from? So today I'm going to give you a great website. We're going to talk about this great website. It's got a free version and a paid version where you can basically type in any kind of phrase that you want for finding stocks based on volume, technical analysis, Bollinger Bands, MACD crossovers, moving average, anything that you like, you can type in a phrase and this website will um, find the stocks for you and then you can go on your way and you can trade the options on them. So let's jump right in and take a look at this website that we are going to um, show you how to find these stocks. This website is called stockfetcher.com. Stockfetcher.com is a great website to help you get started to curate your, your watch list. And I'm also going to show you two other websites as well. And I've talked about these in the past, but I figured I might as well give those to you as well. Everything's free, so this is a good way to get started. No money that you have to put up. So let's talk about stockfetcher.com. What is stockfetcher.com? Stockfetcher.com is one of these websites where you can actually type in a phrase of, of a, you know, a scenario that you think will help you find stocks. Now, what you can do with Stock Fetcher is, first of all, I mean, there's a lot here. I, I can't go over everything, but I'm going to give you just, you know, the finer points here. Um, it gives you examples and it shows you how to type in phrases for things that you want to use to look for stocks. So uh, this is the home page right here. And what you'll find is they give quick examples right here. Um, this is a, a, a moving average 13 day crossing above the 50 day moving average. It's a bullish crossover. And it'll show you in the free version, five stocks that are, are making this type of pattern. And you can click this down arrow and it will give you other examples based on Bollinger Bands, and, and you got Bollinger Band Contraction, Expansion, uh, MACD if you want. It's got MACD Bearish Cross. Let, let's, let's take a look at a MACD Bearish Cross. So here's your MACD Bearish Cross, and here's the five stocks that, that are making that specific um, pattern, right? So, and it gives you this how does it work, and it tells you some things that you can do, and it's got a great user guide. You can just type in anything that you want, and let's scroll down a little bit here, and I can move myself over here a little bit, and it'll give you all these filters that you can use to create any kind of phrase that you want based on, you know, the Bollinger Bands, the, let's see, historical volatility, Fibonacci numbers, um, what else? You've got standard deviations, got all these things that you can use to build your watch list. Now let's scroll back up here and you know on the right hand side you can, here's their, their, their help guide over here, but let's just jump in. Along the top here is, is where you probably want to go. Now you click on the examples and if you want, let's say, let's th look at this Let's look at a MACD bullish crossover. And a MACD is just a, a technical indicator that you can use. And when you click on the MACD bullish crossover, it will show you in this filter preview the exact language that you can use to start creating your watch list. Now, for their version of a MACD cro bullish crossover, they're saying show stocks with a MACD fast line. And here's the, the numbers they use in the fast line. This 12.26.9 crossed above the MACD slow line. And, and they have, and here's some other technical numbers that they use and they want you, and, and they also draw a 50 day moving average and a 20 day moving average on that chart as well. And down here, they will show you the five top stocks that matches those parameters. Now, if you want to get the paid version, you can see the other uh, 144 results from that specific search, right? So you can do things, you can create new filters, um, you, can, you can save your filters. Now, if you, I think just for the paid version, you can save any filter that, that you want and you can save it and you can come back to it later, you know, at another time. You can create your own watch list. So this is a great site. You could use the free version to get you started. And if you want to use some more bells and whistles, 
then you, you, you pay for it. I, I, don't, I don't know how much it is. I just use a free version from time to time. So let's just take a look at some other examples and how you do it. Now, let's just say, um, let's, look in, let's go up to this new 52 week high. And you can see, here's the, the, the preview. Now you could, you could change this, okay? When you click on it, it'll bring up the actual window where you can actually change the wording. Now you can say, I wanna draw the 100 day moving average and compare that to the 200 day or the, have the 200 day on there as well. You click fetch stocks and then it's gonna bring up these five top stocks right here down at the bottom. And if you want the other 561 results, you can uh, compare the plans. Now, if you wanna narrow down your results, you actually probably wanna put in more parameters up at the top here. And, and also, I just wanna show you, when you click on the chart, it'll bring up another window so you can look in the, at the chart in full, okay? So that that is a great thing to have um, for here. Let me just resize this down a little bit. Give me a second. Okay, so there we go. Let's close that window and let me bring this down a little here. So this is, you can pull up the charts. Now let's, I have one that I've saved in the past and I have it on saved in my, in a Word document. So I'm just gonna copy and paste my, uh, my parameters here and I'm gonna go back to Stock Fetcher. And what you can do is you can just get rid of this whole thing and I'm gonna paste in my filter. So now, I've got this filter that I've created. Just I've just randomly thrown some numbers in here, and I want to see stocks where the exponential 50-day moving average has crossed above the exponential 100-day moving average in the last three days. And the stock price close is above $25 a share, and the average 30-day volume is above a million shares, and the stock close, the stock closing price is above its 200 day moving average for the last three days in a row. So when I click on fetch stocks, it's going to give me the top, the, the five top stocks that, that meet my, those parameters that I've just typed in. So you've got uh, Nordstrom, United Airlines, uh, we've got this a Brazilian ETF, Boeing and Simon Property Group, which is a, a real estate investment trust, a REIT as, as they're called. So. Once again, you can click on the stock here, or actually, actually, I can go and now compare it to the the you know the stock charting platform that I use. We're going to look at Nordstrom, which is JWN, and see how it compares. Now, on my charts, I have different parameters. I have my 20-day, 50-day, and 200-day moving averages that I use, and I have the RSI down at the bottom. Let me move myself over here a little bit. So we have Nordstrom, which is definitely has made a nice bullish move, and I just want to say that that. The, the the filters that I just put into stock fetcher is a very bullish type of indicator or technical things that I'm that I'm looking at. So I'm looking at for bullish stocks. And you can see obviously Nordstrom is a very has had a very bullish move here. So let's go back to um, stock fetcher and see that this is a very bullish type of filter that I'm using here. And United Airlines, let's take a look at United Airlines, how it looks on my charts here. So United Airlines is, has definitely been making a move higher. It's crossed above a 50 day, 20 day, and 200 day on my charts. And it's also made a very bullish move on the, in the stock fetcher parameters as well. So, you know, this is a, this is a great free site to get you started on curating your list. Because when you trade options, you have to know how to find the stocks first, right? Because that, otherwise you have nothing to trade the options on. So the key, number one key item here is you have to find stocks to trade on. So how do you do that? Well, stockfetcher.com will allow you to, you know, come up with any scenario that you want that will give you stocks to look at. And then you can potentially filter them out even further and narrow it down. Now this, uh, filter that I just put up above only has 25 results and I've got the top five here so there's only 20 other results that meet my very strict stringent bullish requirement so uh, the more lines that you put in here the more parameters that you're that you want the stocks to meet the smaller the group of stocks it will pump out for you so that may mean that those results are, are truly what you're looking for. So stockfetcher.com, it's a great way to find stocks, to get yourself started 
to cur curating lists and they got the free plans and the paid plans. I don't know how much it costs because I just use the, the free plans every once in a while. You know, you get your top five stocks. I think, you know, right off the bat, you're doing pretty good to be able to find some stocks to look at. So there, there you go. There's your, your, you know, your great website right here, stockfetcher.com. Take a look around. You know, you got all these things up here you can look at. They've got their help files. They can tell you exactly what phrases to type in when you want to look um, for certain stocks making certain price patterns. Okay, so that's that's the number one site. The other sites that that I've talked about in the past to help you create your watch list is the uh, dividend achievers site. The dividend achievers list, I should say. <clears throat> you go to dripinvesting.org and you come to the Dividend Champions Excel spreadsheet. If you have Excel, you can download this spreadsheet. I already have it open on the next page. I'll show you. But the dividend uh, the dividend champions, these are the highest of highest qual quality stocks. These are dividend champions, they're called. These are the some of the best of the best dividend paying stocks. And they've ranked them based on how many years uh, companies have raised their dividends in a row. That's what that's what they do to signify a champion stock is that they had they had to have raised their dividend payout every year for at least 25 years in a row. That's a dividend king. I mean, I'm sorry, dividend uh, aristocrat. That's what we call them, dividend aristocrats. And a dividend king, as, I, as we like to call them, are stocks that have raised their dividends at least 50 years in a row. And let's pull up the Excel spreadsheet here. Now, if you're, if you're looking at me down here in the corner, you may, I may look a little different because I'm standing up today. I'm trying something new. Uh, I, I'm, 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 instead of sitting, I'm standing all the time. Better for circulation. So, um, you know, I can see me standing up here. But anyway, let's talk about the spreadsheet. This is the Dividend Achievers uh, spreadsheet. Now, or, or they call them champions, dividend aristocrats, whatever you want to call them. These are companies that have raised their dividends at least 25 years in a row. And if you look in the number of years column, you'll see how many years in a row these stocks have raised their dividends. 25 years is, is the cutoff to be called a dividend aristocrat. And a dividend king is any stock that has raised their dividends 50 years in a row. That's, that's quality right there. That's cream of the crop. So you can filter out this list, this, this Excel list, to you know, find some stocks for yourself. These are great dividend paying companies, very stable companies. So you go down the list and you know, in this top list, which is at least 25 years in a row, there's how many? There's about 143 companies. Now, if you filter them down to just 50 years or higher, you're going to get a very small list, maybe 15 stocks. So you could start your watch list right there. Okay, so go to dripinvesting.org. One more time, dripinvesting.org. You can find some stocks to um, start your watch list. Now, the other website that I've talked about is the Dogs of the Dow. Dogsofthedow.com is another way to curate a list of potential stocks that you can trade options on. Dogs of the Dow is a, a um, it's just a list of the 10 highest paying dividend, high, I should say highest yielding dividend stocks of the last one year in a row. So this is a, a strategy that recalculates the list every year. So it starts on January 1st and then it goes until December 31st and then it recalculates the highest dividend yielding stocks. You get the 10 highest dividend yielding stocks. And you can look at all the dogs of the Dow for all the previous years and see which stocks have come up. And for this year, the 2020 dogs of the Dow, which is the 10 highest dividend yielding stocks, are down here. You've got Dow, ExxonMobil, IBM, Verizon, Chevron, Pfizer, 3M, Walgreens, Cisco, and Coca-Cola. And it will give you the yield. This is a dividend yield. And you can see they rank them from highest to low. So if you want high dividend yielding stocks compared to their stock price, that's how you find the dividend yield. They will give you the stock price on December 31st, 2019. So we're almost at the end of the one year. And the small dogs is what's called the... the the lowest priced stocks out of these 10. Those are called the small dogs. So you can look at, you know, potentially trading on the 10 of them, or you could trade on the five small dogs. The small dogs are the, the top, the, the five stocks of the lowest stock price out of this list. So there's different ways you can use it. So dogs of the Dow, 
the, the dividend aristocrats at stockfetcher.com is a great way to start your watch list, to curate your watch list. And then you can find um, option strategies, use option strategies on top of these stocks. So there you go. There's a great, those are the three great ways to, to get started on how you can find your, your watch list. All right. So let's take a look at some of the charts this week. And this is what we call our Saturday synopsis. We look at the charts and see what happened over the last week's worth of trading and what may happen moving ahead. I like to call this my Saturday synopsis. And once again, we always start with the S&P 500. We use the SPY to give us an idea of how the broad market has done over the last week or so and over the last couple of weeks because we always have a look back period. So the SP 500, how's it been doing? Well, once again, we, we still have this W pattern, which is a very bullish pattern. Let's open this up a little bit, move things down so we can see. We've had the resistance line here at the top of the W pattern that we wanted the market to move above. And in the last couple of weeks, it moved above, moved below, moved above, moved, moved below. And last Friday, we finished below the resistance line here. We, we said, if you watch my Saturday synopsis from last week, um, I said that we want to get back above the resistance line. And that's what happened this week. Moved above the resistance line. So here we are. The last couple of days, I know it was a short week this week because we had uh, the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. But the last three trading days right here, you can see each one of these lines is one day's worth of trading stayed above the resistance line, which is a great thing. And we had drawn this little triangle pattern as well. And we knew that it would probably break out to one side or the other, and it has broken out to the upside. And that is what we want. We like bullishness. We want to see the market move back up. I'm very bullish at this point. Things are looking really good for the stock market. I mean, they have been looking good, but we had this nice congestion period, and now things are breaking out to the upside. All-time new highs again. Great thing. There's, I, I really don't see anything holding this market back. Things are looking good. Coronavirus vaccine is, you know, right there around the corner. I think people will start getting it next month, December. First line responders, healthcare workers might be the first ones to get this, these things. So general population around the world, hopefully by the springtime, we can all get vaccinated. So the market is optimistic, looking, looking ahead to brighter days and all time new highs. You know, at this point, there's really nothing holding this thing back here in the United States. You know, the U.S. presidential election is pretty much it's been decided. Joe Biden is going to be the next president. Donald Trump is, you know, sort of relenting uh, a bit here. Um, and so Wall Street likes that. We like things to get settled and keep moving forward. So very bullish here. S&P 500 looks good. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq because it definitely made the move I think that we were looking for. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Open this up a little bit, move it down a little bit so we can see. I've got this ascending triangle right here, been here. And we were waiting for the NASDAQ to pop above the resistance line. And look at that. Thursday, I'm sorry, Wednesday and Friday. Thursday was a vacation day in the U.S. Friday convincingly traded above the resistance line, closed above it. So I think you know, Monday, Tuesday, next week, if we can continue to get a couple more closing days above the resistance line, it's just off to the races. I mean, there's really no all time new highs. Once again, there's really nowhere or anything that's holding it back at this point. People are getting enthused. Wall Street's getting enthused. I can only see this market going up from here, which is a good thing. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Same thing. The Dow has been above the resistance line for the last two weeks now. Good thing. I like it looking strong. You can even see a little teeny tiny triangle pattern growing right here. Little teeny one from just three days worth of trading. Okay. It's going to break out again. Uh, I say, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it'll probably get, keep going to the upside. All time new highs all above the resistance. Looking good, looking strong. Market looks good here. So I'd say if you're long, that's a good thing. Uh, let's take a look at some individual stocks as we do see what's happening in individual stocks everyone's favorite right now of course is tesla had just you know look at this power i mean there's really nothing else to say just just an incredible power move finally blasted out of the triangle that we had on this chart for weeks now we were waiting for this thing to break out when it was announced that it would be, it would be included in the s p 500 which should take effect around the third week of december there it goes just 
all this energy that was being stored up just powered it higher hit six did it hit 600 what was the high here the high looked like 598 dollars and change so almost tagged $600 a share. It just ramped up $150 right here. This is a $150 move. Beautiful blast out of the triangle pattern. So that was a good thing. Anyone who's long Tesla, you've been doing great. Is it overbought? Can you get in here? I don't know. I mean, it had a nice vertical move. You know, of course it could keep going higher, but of course it could drop down. The RSI is getting into a little bit of overbought area. It doesn't mean it's going to reverse and turn lower. Just saying it's it's getting overbought. Sure, it, it, it had a nice $150 move. Could it take a pause? Sure, it could take a pause. Maybe it'll drop back down a little bit, give a little breather. But Tesla, uh, I can't see it collapsing and, and you know giving up 20, 30, 40% right now. There just wouldn't be any reason for it but uh, it's looking strong. But if you have some profits built up, you might as well take some money off the table. Uh, you know, it, it, you don't like to give back profits, but Tesla looks strong. I mean, people have to start buying it now because it's been included in the S&P 500. So Tesla looking good. Um, what other stocks do we like to look at? We always like to look at Apple. Apple is still consolidating in this triangle that we've drawn. It's starting to store up its energy. You know, the ranges are getting tighter. You know, it starts out wide and then it gets a little bit tighter, 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 tighter. So eventually something is going to cause Apple to break out either higher or lower. Obviously we want it to go to the upside because we like a bullish market. Typically when you have a triangle pattern like this, you have to look where it came from, okay? It's coming from the downside, moving higher. So that would typically mean it's just storing up energy to move again in the same direction and that should be higher okay so that's what's happening that's what's happening in apple right now let's take a look at amazon amazon has pretty much the same pattern as apple it's got the triangle pattern still coiling in here it has this larger um channel okay but i i focus on the the triangle more than the channel Amazon still has some work to do. It's got a little bit of room to play around in this triangle. So Amazon may stick around this $3,200 level for the time being. Um, obviously, we're coming into Black Friday. We've got holiday sales coming up. I, I have to believe everyone's buying stuff off of Amazon. Sales are going to be ridiculous again. Um, it's just waiting for some of those numbers probably to come out to see how well it did. But obviously we want Amazon to go to the upside. So it's got a little more, little more space to coil in here. So it may be a little bit time before Amazon breaks out. What other stocks do we like to take a look at? Google still has been very strong. Um, bounced right off the 20 day moving average here. On my charts, I have the 20 day, 50 day, 200 day moving average. Um, we talked about Google bouncing off the 200 day a long time ago, made the bullish flag pattern and has jumped up, hugging the 20 day moving average line. So Google looks strong too. What else we have? Microsoft. Microsoft is still kind of meandering around. You can even draw part of the lower channel here if you want. You've got the you know support line here. Let's draw this in, connect the bottoms. And so Microsoft is in this channel. Uh, I, I see probably more sideways action for a little period of time. What else do we have? Facebook is another one that we look at. Facebook, kind of the same thing. Just meandering around. Possible, possible. Uh, we, have the, we have the uptrending part here. Um, you know, can't really draw, maybe draw somewhat of a triangle there. So. Maybe you can use that as, as a base to see what's happening with Facebook. It's got a little more room to run. I see it moving along with this up uptrend right here. So Facebook will probably keep trending to the upside until it hits resistance here. So Facebook maybe got a little bit of bullish action to go, bullish sideways action for Facebook. That's what I'm seeing on the charts for Facebook. Um, what are the ones? Zoom is always another big one. People like these stay at home stocks. Look at Zoom. And when my chart starts to fill in here, Zoom. Okay, so we have somewhat of a, a downtrending channel here for Zoom. Um, we can connect some tops, connect some bottoms. You know, it's not perfect. You know, technical analysis is not black and white. It's not perfect. It all depends on how you see it. 
So Zoom could sort of be in a downtrend channel. Maybe you've got the 50-day moving average that it's bumping up against. Will it pop through or will the 50-day and the downtrending channel knock it back down? That's yet to be seen. Next couple days will be very telling where Zoom wants to go. It's either going to pop above it and start to move back up or the dual resistance of the 50-day and the downtrending line can knock it back down. So these are the things that you have to learn how to do when you're looking at charts. You draw support and resistance lines, you look at the moving averages. These things will help you figure out where a stock is going to move next. Peloton, same thing. I drew this the other day. It's got a downtrending channel. Okay, it's got the 20 day and 50 day sort of giving it some resistance here. You've got the downtrending line giving it resistance. It's either going to break out or it's going to get knocked back down. So watch this, watch this, watch Zoom, watch Peloton. Um, some people who have been in work, uh, Slack Technologies got, got an offer for a buyout from another company and just had this massive $10 move the other day. So if you've been long um, Slack, you know, good for you. Slack's uh, you know, this was just a one day thing. I don't really have any any technical analysis on this one. Um, we always look at AMD as well. AMD is a favorite of ours at, at the smart option seller. AMD is great for put selling. It's been just kind of meandering. And when you sell options, that decay just keeps kicking in. That works in us in an option sellers favor. So we like that AMD looking like it wants to keep moving higher may may tick back down a little bit, but it's kind of stuck in this channel. But, but, I, but I like AMD compared to um, its rival Intel, which is still kind of stuck in the doldrums down here. This has had its horrible earnings um, a while ago and just got knocked down. So it's just kind of meandering down the lows here. So AMD, we, we are defaulting to. Let's take a look at the VIX, you know, to see where, where that's gone um, over the last week or so. Um, the VIX, we look at the VIX because that's a volatility indicator. As the market goes up, the VIX goes down. They move inversely to each other. So VIX is starting to hit lows again, lows that it hasn't seen since the beginning of the, the coronavirus pandemic. Option prices getting cheaper again. Not as cheap as they were, but, but it's moving down in that right direction. So option prices getting cheap. The fear has gone out of the market. When the VIX goes down, that means there's less fear. People are becoming complacent again, a little bit happier with how things are going. So that's what's happening in the VIX. Okay, so moving on for next week. Let's one more time take a look at the, the SPY, SP500. Once again, I, I'm bullish here. I, I like the way things are, are looking. I, I see things going higher. There's really nothing holding this back. The coronavirus is, is the worst news headline out there at this point in time, but the va vaccine is right around the corner. So Wall Street is going to go with the good news. And, you know, I, I see it, I see bullish, bullish times ahead. So if you find stocks that you like, that you're, that you're bullish on, you could use option strategies. As you know, at the Smart Option Seller, we are big put option sellers. And let's just go to our website. I wanna show you once again. If you wanna learn about put option selling, download our free Put Selling Basics Guide. It's a free, it's a free download. It talks all about put selling. You put your name and email address in here, you get a free copy. Also, our services. We have two newsletters, Smart Option Seller Newsletter. We sell put options, Vertical Spread Trader. We sell put option credit spreads. And we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you get to the next level if you need some help with that. So that's all for me today. If you like this video, please subscribe. Okay, you won't miss uh, another video. Subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content of this video and leave me a comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you want to see. I can make a video in the future. Uh, if it jives with what, what we're looking at, send me an email. I, I'm always here to help. I will always answer. So that's all for me today. Remember the, the, the three websites we looked at, We've, we've got the stockfetcher.com, we've got the drip investing, and you've got the dogs of the Dow. So I hope that's good for you to help you build your own watch list for, for the future. I'm wishing everyone a good weekend and a great week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.